Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Let's not waste any time picking up right where we left off. I've got the engine masked and plugged everywhere that it needs to be for the painting process. And I'll show you this tip one more time. I think we talked about this back during the Super M series, but here's something Senior showed me. If you want to uh, mask a shiv pulley to keep paint from getting in where the belt is going to ride, the quickest and easiest way to do it is to take some clothesline rope and just wrap in there. You can push it in on itself. It holds itself in position, do all of your painting. And then when you're ready to unmask, just find the loose end and give it a pull. You've got nice clean pulley sheaves that are not going to transfer sticky, fresh paint onto a belt. It works great. So we're at the big moment. We can get the engine off of the stand. Okay, first piece on today is the bell housing plate. I'm just going to uh, loosely hang it with a couple of bolts and then it's going to need to be tapped onto the alignment dowels. There's two of those. And we'll tighten these six bolts that hold it on. And now we have this piece that's like an inspection cover and there is a gasket for it in the kit. You have to uh, bend it up over the top just a bit and it doesn't, it doesn't really have to seal anything. It's just into the bell housing compartment. So the gasket's probably just for dirt, debris, dust more than anything. And it's flywheel time now. I prefer to use a guide bolt like this. That's just a fine thread half inch bolt with the head cut off. Because this alignment dowel on the crank flange is a very tight fit in the flywheel itself, that's almost as good as the second set of hands. As a rule, too, I always draw the flywheel up before I put the fold-over locks under any of the bolts because they'll just be in the way at this point. Guide bolt out. All right, bolts back out. And here's another tip too. I always pre-bend the lock tabs on these because if you leave them flat and then tighten the flywheel bolts down, it's really tough to get beneath them and start to bend them up. So you will, um, you'll thank yourself for taking the time to uh, just get those kicked up ahead of time makes it a lot easier. I do 75 foot-pounds on these flywheel bolts. That's kind of a compromise between half by 20 threads, grade five to grade eight. All right, grade, if we knew it was grade eight, we'd go to full 90. I don't know what grade these are, so. 75, they're nice and solid and they tighten in very well. And that also leaves me a little bit of leeway 
because I'm a little bit OCD, if I want to just finish, just turning them a little bit to align a flat with a lock tab to have a nice square bend if I so choose. This one's, I think, going to be on a 45 no matter how I look at it, but yeah, we get by. And we're folding, and we're folding, and we're folding. And we're folding, and we're folding some more, and we're folding some more, and one more, and we're done. Now I want to take a minute to talk about this slight heat checking I found on the flywheel when I took this apart this last time. A little bit here and a little bit starting right there. That surprised me because this whole clutch system was brand new the last time I was into this tractor, but it's never been a really smooth clutch on engagement. There's always been a little bit of clutch uh, chatter you could feel in the drive line. Like when I let out on the clutch pedal slowly, you could watch the back wheels and they would kind of go bup, 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 and then they would start turning. So there's always been some, some grabbiness going on here. Um, luckily I did mark the flywheel and the pressure plate in relation to one another before I took it apart. So we know this checking is 180 off from our mark on the flywheel. I noticed heat checking in similar spots on the pressure plate. And again, those are 180 off from the mark there. So I think I found the reason why we've always had a clutch chatter. So what I did was uh, before I put the flywheel on the engine, I threw the disc and the pressure plate on it and I tightened all the perimeter bolts down. What that does is drops all three of the engagement arms and I found that the arm that was 180 off from the mark was a sixteenth of an inch lower than the other two. That's about the distance between my thumb and my finger at the narrowest point. And that explains why we'd have some chatter and why we have heat checking in this area because this was the last one to release and the first one to re-engage. So we always had more pressure longer in the vicinity of this misadjusted arm than we did in the other two. And that's why we have the heat buildup that was going on and that's why we had the chatter. And so this came from new with the tamper-proof yellow paint on the adjustment bolts and the jam nuts. And it was accompanied with a piece of paper that said, never under any circumstances ever try to adjust these because it will void the warranty and it will leak radiation to the atmosphere and you'll have your birthday taken away and all kinds of really bad things were about to happen and I decided I'm going to adjust this anyway. So I did, torqued everything back down and I verified we have equal adjustment on all three pressure plate arms for the first time with this clutch. So it definitely pays to look into anomalies like that. When you see something that doesn't look right, try and figure it out. So we're finally ready to hang the clutch back on. I wanted to show you this tool real quick. Um, old school mechanics will know all about it, but it's a universal clutch disc aligner. So we've got the handle and this cone that slides on it and the end of it is threaded and we've got different sized um, mandrels that will attach to the end of it to match the size of the pilot bearing. All right, so this is how you center a clutch disc under a pressure plate so that when you bolt the engine up to the transmission, the input shaft will line right in. If you get that clutch disc off to one side or another, not centered, you're not gonna get all that stuff to line up. So yeah, you just uh, put the clutch disc and pressure plate on there and then this goes through the center of it. It self aligns with the uh, pilot bearing and then as you slide this, um, this cone shaped sleeve up, it will center the clutch disc onto itself and then you go and you tighten the pressure plate bolts down and then everything is good to go. Once everything's tight, that holds the disc centered. Take this out, you're done. So disc and pressure plate, we can align the marks that we made earlier. I'll just throw a couple bolts in loosely just to hang everything for now. By a couple, I meant three. Can't fall out now anyhow, so. There we are. 
a little bit of float in the tool, but it uh, it gets you close enough that everything's going to line in just fine. You always want to tighten the pressure plate bolts evenly, little bits at a time. Otherwise, you could warp the plate. And you'll notice these um, arms, these engagement arms, will flex in further and further as the pressure plate is tightened down. All right, we're just about there. I just draw all the bolts up just until they begin to get tight, and we'll do the final torque on them later. These are just 5 five sixteenths coarse thread bolts. We've got enough uh, pressure on the clutch disc to hold it centered now so we can take the centering tool out. We'll do the final torque on these and the clutch is done. And now we're all masked off on the backside too. We won't get any overspray on that flywheel or clutch. So we've got the engine ready for paint. I just checked the weather report and it looks like maybe I will get a break in the weather tomorrow that's suitable enough to spray paint, mainly in the AM, if you believe the weather guessers. Hopefully it works out. It'd be really nice to get that red so that I can move on with everything else that's on the floor over there. I also made a couple of judgment calls. I had a whole bench full of sub-assemblies that I wanted to go through on camera. I decided to go ahead and prep the uh, oil filter for paint as well as the thermostat housing. There's really nothing in either of those that's really earth shattering. I put a new filter and seal in that one and a new thermostat and gasket in that one. They're prepped and ready to go as well because, well, if I throw that frame rail on, I'm gonna wish that I had the oil filter in place. So I wanna have that ready and it'd just be nice to have the thermostat up there to round out the batch. I've also got the fan, a few other miscellaneous coolant piping, um, water pump hardware, nuts and bolts to hold it all together. So if everything works out, We'll be laying down red paint tomorrow. I've already got the air hose ran out front. Paint gun is staged. Paint cans are there. Hopefully it all works out.
there it is everybody the masking did its job we've got the fresh paint where it needs to be we've got the clean bare metal where it needs to be and words can't describe how happy i am to see this engine finally in red this has been such a sticking point with this project i think we have this hurdle cleared finally and as badly as i want to start hanging this onto the chassis right now i've found that it's best if we give this paint a good 48 hours to set up uh, that was 48 not 428 so that means it's going to stay quite soft through tomorrow still so i should probably just vacate the shop resist the temptation and just go do something else tomorrow and come back the day after and we can start hanging that engine because if i handled it too roughly at this point it would be very easy to mar the paint i could even put handprints in it and i don't want to see that so i think that's going to be the plan it was a good day today, and uh, I'm excited about getting that engine bolted up. I hope you are as well, and I hope to see you all back next time. As always, everyone, thank you for watching. Exciting times!